Hello everyone! Welcome back to my channel, Crafty Concepts with Erin. I do have a fun scrapbook layout planned for today. I'm going to be documenting these photos of my boys, a few of our dogs, and then some of their uh, childhood best friends. And you can see they've got this really old fiberglass boat that a, you know, owner of this pond gave them permission. And it was just a really, really fun time. There's actually lots of memories involving this boat and this pond. But I was inspired by this layout. Now my photos are obviously very different um, from the photo sizes they have here, but I was drawn to the idea and concept of the layout. So I am going to be using the Let's Go Anywhere travel collection along with the hooked on fishing stamp set. I think that the boat and the fishing and it's just perfect, right? So you can see they've got the little matte paper and then some of the blues and just some really fun little details with the fishing and the cattails or some ink blending. So lots of good ideas that I can pull out of this layout. So even though this is travel themed and I have created several travel themed layouts already, it's great for outdoors because of the colors and the map and also very uh, lovely colors for masculine layouts. So these right here, the greens and the blue and this plaid, I mean, this is just great for documenting so many photos of my boys. Now, I'm not going to use the passport paper or the airplane paper, but you can see the plaid is on the other side. So let me clear these out of the way and I'll grab my Versamats. This is going to be a double page layout because I had more than the three photos on the inspiration page. I may switch this out, but we are going to start with some nice crisp white daisy. I have five photos. So let's see here. These three are four inches by five and a half. That does include the white border. And then I've got a four by four and a three by four. So I know I want this photo here of my son Clayton on this side because he's looking in. Same for the canoe picture. I'm going to have, you know, that one on this side. And then I've got these three photos. So what I'm thinking is, you know, I'm really loving this layout. They've got a column here. So what I could do, and the way I printed this in four by four, is this would work like this, even though they have three smaller photos, those are probably three by three, I can get the same look uh, creating a column of photos with just two. So then we can find a home for this one over here. So I'm gonna kind of put together this side and then the, the design of this side is going to help me decide where to put elements on this side. Now we don't have the exact measurements for that page, but I just kind of eyeballed it <clears throat> and I cut these two pieces to four inches by 12. I just kind of played up the rule of thirds and divided it into three sections. So they've got their pictures kind of overlapping the center here. And then there's the torn paper edge on the bottom. And I do like that. So this is a couple inches and that way I can kind of tear it off and play around with it. Now they have a couple different layers. I'm going to start with just the sapphire blue first and I can always go back and add that pattern paper um, after the fact. So there's also this zip strip here which they have on the side of the photos but we're going to need to mat those on something. It looks like they have the maybe the limeade. They tell you the colors of the projects on the bottom here so you know what colors were used to create all of these. So I'm going to guess that is limeade. Before I cut this down, I should make sure I'm happy with this color behind my photos. And this was very early spring. It was April of 2020. And it does, there's just, you know, new growth on the trees. And it is the exact same color as this limeade, fresh spring green color. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that down. This is four and a half inches by 10 inches. And let's go ahead and tear this paper. I do want that white edge, so I'm gonna tear it towards me here. And I don't like crazy tears, so I kind of, you know, just move slowly and just do little bits at a time. I am sure going to miss the white core of Close to My Heart's cardstock. You can do so many fun things with it. So we are almost done to the bottom here. I will get the second piece done off camera because I will extend that over to the left-hand side. So let's tuck this little guy underneath a little bit. I like everything layered. And then we'll put this one underneath our photo bank. 
and I think that looks good. Now, they also have a strip of periwinkle across the bottom, so I cut that at a half inch by 12, and they have stamped those little fishing lures all the way across, and I think that's super cute. So I've got my fishing lure and my sapphire ink. I'm going to flip my bursa mat over so we have that nice foam backing to work on, and we can just move our way across this strip and make our own pattern paper. Tiny little stamp images are perfect for techniques like this, and I love that you can add a custom theme to a paper pack. So we have some kind of more neutral patterns, if you will, but just by using this fishing theme stamp and making our own pattern paper, we will have a fishing layout. So let me get this out of the way. That looks so cute. I love that. We can kind of start putting together the second side. Now I have this piece that's eight inches by 12. So that's just the remaining piece of what's on the right hand side there. And we can bring our photos in. And as I mentioned, I do want to extend this across the bottom so that it looks like one continuous page. And I stamped another row of our little fishing flies there. Let's bring in more limeade to balance out the right hand side. Now this column is shorter because that's a three by four rather than a four by four, but I think that's just fine. So we are ready to create our embellishments using the hooked on fishing stamp. I have a whole bunch of scraps of white daisy here. Now I'm not really sure exactly what I'm going to need. So I'm going to stamp out a bunch of the fish and some of the cattails and I can always make more if I need them. That's one of the beauty of, you know, beauties of having stamp sets. I am using intense black ink because I am going to color them in with my alcohol marker. So I'll do a couple on camera with you and then get the rest done off camera just so you don't have to watch me coloring the fish because they'll all be the same. So let's stamp out a couple more. We'll have fish everywhere. For my marker colors, I have three different colors here. We've got citrus green, light green, and the brown one here is earth brown. These are smaller images, so I'm not going to do a lot of shading, but it is fun to add a couple different colors just to make them more interesting. So I'm going to use the light green, but the darkest shade. Let me zoom in for you and color in the fins of the fish. And we've got a little stripe down the center, maybe around the gills here. And then I'm going to switch to the lightest color and kind of blend that out. And then I pulled the citrus green blend because it's very similar to the limeade. So I thought it'd be fun to add a little bit of brightness to the fish's little belly here. And for the cattails, I'm going to use the light green and the earth brown. So this is the medium color of the earth brown. I do think it's a very lovely shade of brown for cattails. It's quite perfect. And then we'll use the light green. And I do appreciate these bullet tips. You can get in these fine little images here. And then towards the base of the uh, foliage here, I'm going to use the medium because it's kind of naturally darker towards the base where you have more of the plants uh, grouped together, if that's making sense. So again, I'll get the rest of those colored just the same and die cut so we can embellish the page. I have quite a few fishing pictures of my boys, so this stamp set is going to come in handy. Now, they're not actively fishing in these photos, although they did fish this pond quite a bit, but the story I want to tell has to do with fishing. So I went ahead and stamped the boat on toffee, just like they have in the example layout here. And we're gonna put that right in the exact same location. Now I want my little, you know, cattails originating from something. So I like that it's tucked underneath that strip on the bottom. I don't wanna overthink this. I'm going to put those over there and we are going to embellish this page exactly as they have shown on the example layout. So they also have this little sentiment up top and it says, rise and shine, it's fishing time. I'm going to ink that up in black ink and then I will grab one of my stitched circle dies. I love the stitching detail around these and then cut that into a nice circle to overlay in this area. Now you see they have these little banner tails. Those are from the decorative shape dies and these will be back in stock. They're expected in April, but they have that stitching detail on the end there. So I cut one in periwinkle and one in toffee to carry that toffee color up to the top and kind of replicate that little embellishment cluster. So the very first time the boys got permission to go onto this pond, I was not there. And they came home with this story about this huge, mysterious white fish in the water. You know, it's very murky water, so they couldn't really see, but they said it would kind of surface and it had whiskers. So we're all thinking it's got to be a catfish, right? More on that in a moment. 
We are going to add some ink blending. So they have a little soft ink blending on the uh, inspiration layout, and I really like that. So I'm gonna use my blending brush and blot that off first and scoot these items out of the way so I can have that ink blending coming out from underneath behind my photos here. I like to bring that back in and just make sure that the color is visible. Sometimes you end up covering it, so we do need to extend that out just a little bit further. Now, just to save a little bit of time, I did stamp the little boy that's fishing off camera and get him colored in, but I'll share the colors. For his overalls, I've used True Blue shades. His hat is muted brown, and then his shirt is brown gray. And I think that he is so adorable. We're gonna sit his little behind right on the boat there. And then in the example layout, they also have the little can of worms sitting behind him, and I do want to replicate that. So we'll put that right there. And then they have the fish kind of jumping about. So the boys tried really hard to catch this mysterious white fish lurking in the pond, right? They never did. But one day they finally did get a really good look at it and they came home, mom, it's a koi. And they were all excited because I have a koi pond and I am very fond of koi. So once they discovered it was not a catfish and it was just a very large, old, probably very old white koi swimming in this pond, they no longer wanted to catch it because, you know, we don't catch mom's fish, so we must not catch any koi. I'm sure that's what was going on in their mind. But yeah, it was just really cool. So they kind of made up stories about this wise old fish living in this pond and they just had a really good time. I wanna bring some of that toffee over from the boat on the right hand side. So I matted that photo. And then we have another one of the zip strips that is on the right hand page. So I always recommend bringing over elements, patterns and colors, little design elements when you're creating a second page and it gives them a cohesive feel. I'm thinking about having that stop short like the other side, but you know, I don't think I like it. It looks a little awkward. Let's slide that up. And we do have some more cattails. So I'm thinking about adding the title down in this area here. I dug through my fishing stamp collection and came across this one here. It says hook, line, and sinker. It's from the Let's Go Fishing stamp. I've had this one quite some time. So I've stamped that in sapphire ink and dovetailed the end. And I thought, well, let's try this one under the photo here. Mm, I don't know. It's kind of boring. What if we add some ink blending behind it to maybe make it pop a little bit? Yeah, let's try that. Since we have that on the other side, we should probably repeat that over here anyway. So again, same thing. I'm going to blot this off a little bit so I get a nice soft color. And then let me scoot these items out of the way. I'm telling you, this is why I dry fit everything. It just makes life so much easier. So I'll just put a nice little soft halo of color. And maybe this will help that title to kind of stand out a little bit. I have used this hook, line, and sinker element on pages before for a title, and I do like it. But let's see here. Let me tuck that back underneath there and get it situated. You know what? I mean, it's okay, it's not bad, but I think we can do better. I turned to my Cricut and created this. Now the Everyday Adventure, and then we have the Bobber. Those are all cut out from cardstock and I adhered the letters. So Everyday is in Sapphire and Adventure is in Pine. And then the little Fishing Bobber is from the Periwinkle cardstock. I like that a lot better and I feel like the title's perfect because you know it was April of 2020, the world had just shut down, everybody was home, and these boys were just really, enjoy I hate to say it, but they were, they were enjoying the extra time to frolic in the woods. They were definitely loving their everyday adventures. So I'm just going to use these extra pieces. I made more cattails because it just needed more to fill this space in here. And then more of the little fish. And I, I like that, that is looking good. So what I like to do often with my leaves and different flower elements is just pop up the, the tips of it, the top. So I'm using little tiny foam dots behind the cattails and then the base of it will be adhered flat to the layout with tape runner. So it gives them just a little bit of dimension at the top and it has just a really fun kind of realistic feel. So I've added some tape runner to the back of my title there and then we'll do the same thing with the other cattails and then I'm gonna pop up the fish with foam tape also. 
I will link the title element below. Now I have Cricut Access, so those are you know paid for images, but I combined several different images to make this title myself. So I've got a couple word stickers here. One says play a little and the other one says adventure. Those are from the Let's Go Anywhere sticker sheet. And then I typed up my journaling and printed that out on cardstock. Now I do have a journaling tips video showing exactly how I do this. So I will leave that in the description box below. It's 11 and a half ways or 10 and a half ways to add journaling. And I'll walk you through the process. So I love strip journaling and I like to kind of stagger it and offset it. And this is what they used on the inspiration layout anyway. So it's kind of perfect. So I'm going to use a little liquid glue and that allows me to wiggle these into place and get them nice and straight. I'll read you my journaling. It says, Hayden, Clayton, Emmett, and Everest were super excited to have permission to use this old canoe and fish in a pond near our home. They returned with tales of a mysterious white whiskered fish lurking in the murky water. Assuming it was a catfish, they attempted to catch it but never could. The creature finally let them have a good look and it turned out to be a big white koi. They spent many an afternoon playing in this pond and the old fiberglass boat always left splinters in their behinds, but they... It didn't deter them one bit. Now this is a little fun idea I have long incorporated onto my fishing layouts. Tangled thread just really represents tangled fishing line. And if you fish with kids, chances are you have tangled fishing line. So I literally just cut this very inexpensive thread that I purchased at Walmart, ball it up in my fingers, and then tuck it under my embellishment cluster. I went through a time when I put this on all of my cards and you know just added it to everything. And it's just really fun, but but it's perfect for a fishing layout. So there is some tape runner on the back of that circle, but I'm going to add just a few drops of glue to reinforce that. And then looking at this layout, I felt that it needed a little something more. So I've cut a little tag from the pattern paper. And then let's actually, I'm gonna put these up top here and we'll add a second tag. This one here is the periwinkle, which we have scattered about in the other embellishment clusters. Then we can put our tags. I did switch that adventure tag out to one that says explore together. And then we need a little background stamping. So on the background element stamp, this has been a favorite for a long time. There's this little row of X's or like little stitching marks. These are really fun to just add a little something to the edge of your photo. So we'll do one there and then maybe one right in this section here. And then I also wanna add a little bit of splatter. So I'm gonna to switch to my blue ink and add some tiny little splatter elements to the embellishment clusters. Let's put one right here too, peeking out from behind that cattail. Let me hold this up for you so you can appreciate the details. I will of course have still shots up on my Facebook, Pinterest, or Instagram accounts. Doesn't the little splatter stamp really add a lot? And then here you can see all of that thread, tangled thread poking out. Doesn't that look cute? It just adds a nice little textural element too. And then we have a little splatter stamp and our cute little fish there. Look at Murphy in the canoe, having a good time. Everything I used can be found in the description box below. While supplies last, things are moving like hotcakes, so something to keep in mind. If you are looking for more inspiration for masculine boy type layouts, then definitely check this uh, set of videos out here over on the right. And don't forget to subscribe. If you're not already a subscriber, I welcome you to join the community. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.